All right, good evening, everybody. Welcome to the September 14th, 2022 regular meeting of the Chino Valley Fire District Board of Directors. The time is 5 o'clock p.m. Roll call. All of us are here. Um, adjourning to closed session. Uh, before I adjourn to the open session of the closed session portion of the meeting, I'll read the closed session item. Conference with legal counsel anticipated litigation, government code section 54956. Point nine, subsection D2, significant exposure to litigation, one potential case. Do we have any public speakers on the closed session item? No, we do not. I will now adjourn the open session and closed session. Will we return to the open session at 6 o'clock p.m.? Thank you. All right, good evening, everybody. Uh, I will... Where are we going here? Welcome to December 14th, 2022, regular board meeting, regular board meeting of the Chino Valley Fire District Board of Directors. The time is uh, 6 o'clock, and we'll now begin the meeting. Um, the roll call, everybody is here. And legal counsel, if you could please report out of closed session. Uh, thank you, Board President Krieger. Uh, with respect to the one closed session agenda item this evening, conference with legal counsel anticipated litigation under government code section 54956.9D2, there is no reportable action. Excellent. If everybody could please stand for the flag salute, followed by the invocation. Vice President Monaco, if you could please lead us off. Absolutely. Please join me in a pledge to the flag of the greatest country in the world. Ready, begin. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I'm going to make one comment real quick. Please, go ahead. My youngest grandson is now in the <laughs> second week of the Naval Academy. Excellent. Uh, Chaplain Hood, if you could please lead us off, sir. Let us pray. Dear Father, we just thank you for just getting us here safely, Lord. We pray for, we thank you for your love, your kind, kindness and mercy, Father. I pray for that the meeting that happens tonight, Father, is led by your wisdom and your guidance, Father. I pray for everybody here, first responders, and anybody else that is here that is a resident, Father. I pray that you just put a hedge of protection over their household. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you. You all be seated. Thank you. Acting Clerk of the Board, do we have any changes to the agenda? There are no changes. All right, this evening we have three proclamations on our agenda. The complete proclamations are available on our website and part of our agenda packet. The first one is for Fire Prevention Week. Fire Prevention Week commemorates the Great Chicago Fire of 1871, which killed more than 250 people, left 100,000 homeless, destroyed more than 17,400 buildings, and burned more than 2,000 acres. Today, fire kills more than 3,000 people in the United States each year, and more than 80% of all fire deaths occur in the home. The Chino Valley Fire District is committed to the safety and life and property for the devastating effects of fire and calls upon the people of the Chino Valley to participate in fire safety and preparedness. The Fire District Board of Directors would like to proclaim the week of October 9th through the 15th, 2022 as Fire Prevention Week. The next one will be for National Awareness Day. In July 2010, the U.S. Department of Homeland Security launched a national campaign to recognize behaviors and indicators of terrorism and terrorism-related crime, as well, as well as the importance of reporting suspicious activity to state and local law enforcement. And has created partnerships to educate the public on suspicious activities and potential threats, promoting being watchful and reporting unusual activity to law enforcement. The Fire District has established the Bleed Safe Community Valley Program designed to increase survivability from potential tra traumatic incidents by community members and readiness, and will continue to build relationships with local law enforcement and city officials in support of together maintaining public safety and awareness. The Fire District Board of Directors would like to proclaim September 25, 2022 
as, quote, if you see something, say something, National Awareness Day, end quote. And the third proclamation is breast cancer awareness. Breast cancer touches the lives of, of Americans from every background and every community across our nation. And during National Breast Cancer Awareness Month, we honor those we have lost, lend our strength to those who carry the fight, and pledge to educate ourselves and our loved ones about the tragic disease and importance of early detection. This month, we stand with those who have been affected by breast cancer and together strengthen our resolve towards a future free from cancer in all forms. The Fire District Board of Directors would like to proclaim October as National Breast Cancer Awareness Month. And in doing so, uh, we'll all be wearing pink next month when we have it. Now we get to the fun stuff. We have some employee service awards. Okay, first on the list is Melania Arredondo. Can you please come forward? She is receiving her 15 years of service. All right, Office Ignition Melania Arredondo began her career with the Fire District in 2007. She supports our clerk of the board department as an office technician. Thank you for your 15 years of service to the Fire District. And she's one of our, one of our right hand people. <laughs> All right, well, there we go. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> let's have our own awards. <laughs> uh, like I said, she take, takes care of us. <laughs> okay. The next award is for 20 years service. Captain Brian Sanchez, can you please come forward? Oh, yes. I'm sorry, Captain Brian Sanchez was unable to join us this evening, but is being recognized for 20 wonderful years of service. So I'm just going to read this real quick. Uh, Captain Sanchez began his career with the fire district on September 20, 2002. As a firefighter paramedic, he was promoted to engineer in 2007 and captain in 2017. So we thank him for his 20 years of service, and we'll make sure he actually gets something that, that goes up there. The next presentation is Tower 9 plaque presentation. Paramedic Christian Noba and Tower 9 come up front, please. Sanchez at 20 years, 
we expect for all of you to give us 30 to 40 years um, <laughs> or, more. And, or more and uh, do good things. And if this plaque is any reflection of your commitment and your attention to detail, then uh, I'm sure that we'll have a lot of good years uh, with all of you. So thank you very much on behalf of the whole organization. Okay, the next item is a retirement recognition. Fire Inspector Jen Powderly, please come forward. to recognize Jim Powderly for 17 years of service with the Chino Valley Fire District. Jim began his, his fire service career with the U.S. Navy, and after his retirement, he continued his career in fire prevention positions at the Los Angeles Air Force Base and with the city of La Habra Heights. Jim joined Chino Valley Fire in 2005 as a fire inspector, and he served the community by conducting fire inspections on phases of construction and, and maintenance built uh, business inspections. In addition to his fire inspection duties, Jim was a fire investigator. He managed the Reserve Fire Inspector Program. He served as liaison to the Carbon Canyon Fire Safe Council, and was a counselor for the Fire District's Juvenile Fire Center Program. Jim was also a very, very, very active member, uh, uh, community volunteer for the Chino Valley. Jim was recognized in 2021 as a member of the year by the Campus Zone. Campus Zwano? Yeah. Good <laughs> enough. Well, Memorial from California Conference of Arts Investigators. In 2014, Jim was recognized as the Fire District Employee of the Year. Also in 2014, Jim and his wife Casey were recognized as the Chino Community Hero. Jim and his wife Casey have left Chino and moved to Big Bear, where they are enjoying the peace and quiet of retirement life. And yes, his house is fine, I asked earlier. They make it down the hill regularly to visit with their six uh, children and their grandchildren. Jim, on behalf of Chino Valley Fire, I want to thank you for your years of military service and your dedication, not only to the fire district, but uh, to the Chino Valley as a whole. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you. You know, it's, it's always hard when you're really losing good employees. Jim, uh, when I got here, um, Jim was already here. And the one thing that's always resonated with me is when we talk about community service, he's the, the purest example of someone who's of service. Actually, not just Jim. I know this is your day, but your wife as well. Absolutely. Um, you know, I know, I know your wife just through the community and her commitment over at the Y. So the point is, is that this is a family who regularly has given back to this community, to, to both of these communities. So. We appreciate you, Jim. We appreciate you for your military service. We appreciate you for your service here. Um, uh, we, uh, I would venture to guess that if you know anybody else in the fire service, you probably know Jim because um, our, um, our in, uh, reserve inspector program here has put out a lot of people that work across this county, into LA County, into Orange County. So uh, uh, this was not never a strength of mine, so those are kind of one of those things that you appreciate when you have somebody who's really good at mentoring taking in young people, giving them the tools they need to go out and be successful in their life. So I've always looked at Jim like, wow, I wish I was that good at that. So Jim, I, I mentioned this at our luncheon, I've always appreciated your engagement of the young people to help get them prepared for the world. Um, it's a special um, gift that you have. 
So for you and your wife, um, congratulations and thank you. welcome to retirement. And thank you. And, and we have a couple more uh, presentations, but we well, you uh, step over here and we'll take another picture. <laughs> and, then, and then I'll call up the other couple. <laughs> yeah, thank you for the challenge point. <laughs> All right, from uh, the city of Chino, we have Council Member Walt Polk. Hello, Jim. Well, thank you for your service and congratulations on your retirement. Absolutely, yeah. Look forward to seeing you at a car show. Right. <laughs> <laughs> And lastly, from the county of San Bernardino, uh, Kurt Hagman's office, who's at the Jim wants to say a few words. Oh, I'm sorry. Jim, did you want to say a few words? Oh, sure. I forgot to, <laughs> <laughs> I forgot to ask that. <laughs> I saw Ryan hit it for the back of the <laughs> I got to stay, unfortunately, otherwise I wouldn't want to. <laughs> no, I just, real brief, I can't leave without saying something. I appreciate you. I appreciate the board. Um, all of you. Um, past board members um, since day one. Um, you've always had the districts back. Uh, when you were here sitting in that chair when I started. And, uh, <laughs> Is that right? We're both here, so we got to do it, did something right. But thank you, thank you all. Um, Sarah, I don't, no, I'm Sarah. I don't see anybody yeah. from the Fire Safety Council here, but thank you so much for all your support with that program. You know, I cherish those years working with the Canyon, and uh, it was just, it was great to uh, see what a community can do when they come together. Um, Barbara, I just admire Jim so much. And, uh, you know, uh, with the Lions Club, every time that ice cream truck was out there, he had that huge smile and uh, just handing out the ice cream. It just warmed my heart. Uh, Ray Marquez, always at the community events uh, representing Chino Hills. Steve, I always saw you out there at the events. And Walt, gosh, you've been around the community forever, long before I was here. And, and Casey and I, we'd be out there, uh, Jamie and Phil, uh, doing different things. And uh, gosh, you guys are always out there. Um, it's just been a, an honor to work for this district. Um, a lot of people, you know, that are in this room, you know, I, I can't, I don't want to take up the time and, and mention everybody, but my gosh, you know, there's just so much that goes on in this community and it happens because of people like you in this room. And uh, it's very much appreciated. And uh, I've had some good leaders over the years. Um, my uh, fire marshal is not able to make it today, but uh, to be quite honest with you, uh, some of the things like Fire Safety Council, the the Youth Fire Center program, the, the Reserve program, couldn't do it without their support. Um, you know, they give you a little bit of direction and uh, let you spread your wings and fly, and I think that's how we all grow. And I appreciate it. I couldn't have done half the things I did without support. And uh, my amazing wife right there beside me the whole time. So um, I appreciate all of you. And, uh, Thank you very much. Thank you, Jim.
Okay, the next retirement is Clerk of the Board, Administrative Manager, Sandra Henley. Can you please come forward? Come on up. So Sandra was hired by the Chino Valley Fire District in 1998 and has worked for the fire district for almost 25 years. She previously worked for the city of Chino in the clerk's office and for the county of Orange. She has worked in the government uh, in the government until seven since 1992. She holds a BS degree in organizational management from the University of Laverne School of Public Administration. She's also a graduate of the California Technical Training Institute for, for Clerks and holds a professional municipal clerk certification from UC Riverside. You're really tripping me up with all this stuff. <laughs> she also holds the internationally recognized title of Certified Municipal Clerk, which is a professional designation granted by the International Institute of Municipal Clerks after a rigorous program of education and professional development. Sandra also holds the California Special District, Special District Government Certification and District Clerks Certification. She serves on the International Education Task Force through the International Institute of Municipal Clerks. <laughs> Did you write this? <laughs> no, okay. as, a, as clerk of the board, Sandra and her team have taken the lead in securing and maintaining the District of Distinction and Transparency Certification through the California Special District Association. Sandra has maintained the highest ethical standards in the clerk's office to ensure that the fire district and Mike Krieger, board president, conducts business with transparency to ensure public access participation in fire district business. She, really, she, she did write that part. Yeah. <laughs> Sandra has tried to develop her team and automate processes in the department to maintain efficiency at the highest levels of accessibility of information for the public and to ensure government's legal compliance for the fire district. Under her leadership, the clerk's office transitioned to a paperless agenda process and automation of the entire office. During her tenure, she's worked for a total of six fire chiefs and supported 19 elected board members. The district has had a total of only 22 board members since its incorporation. Sandra is also the longest serving clerk of the board in the history of the district. In her retirement, Sandra plans to spend more quality time with her family and close friends, travel, and just relax. I assume she'll be going to Hawaii soon, maybe? <laughs> I, I would assume so. Because that's what all the pictures in her office were. <laughs> I was always jealous because she's like, oh, it's, it's my happy place. So, uh, you know, it, from my perspective, you've been a vital, vital, integral part of of me being a board member and helping to guide me through the years, um, uh, slapping my hand when it needed to be slapped a little bit. But uh, but you've really just been outstanding and really just a guiding post for me personally uh, through my tenure here on the board. So congratulations, we're going to miss you greatly. You got it. With that, we have some flowers here for you. And then uh, the chief has something he wants to say. I, I do. So I'm going to hope these flowers are for, first, for her as well, Ms. Indiana. So uh, Sandra holds a very, very special place in my heart. You know, when I got hired in the fire department in general, you know, what the community sees is they see the good work that all the, the suppression staff do when they respond out, which is super um, important and, you know, it's, it, and service delivery. But, but Sandra's position, as I mentioned earlier about what the line is, the clerk's office is kind of really the unsung hero. It reminds me when I used to work, and I'm not really a big analogy guy, but I'm going to go there. When I worked for Nordstrom, the most important thing is that we would send the people away with the suit that they desired, the tie they wanted, and it was all hemmed up and done right. And those people were usually in the back corner, you never saw them, but, but the end product came from them putting all the stuff together, making sure the hem was right, making sure that uh, it was just tailored, just perfect for the person. That was, that was the customer service that was expected. As, as uh, someone that was appointed in this role, um, I wouldn't be able to be successful without Sandra, personally. Um, and she's back there making sure that we are uh, maintaining all of our governance. You know, when I got hired, I didn't even know what a clerk of board was. And so I can tell you now, it's probably one of the most uh, important aspects of what we do. We don't get to see it every day because it's not out in front. But Sandra, from the bottom of my heart, thank you. You, thank you to Lenny, her, 
to us for, for many, many years. Um, you are a dear friend that I expect that I will talk to for many, many years, probably daily, if my husband loves me, um, to, to help guide me. To help guide me. Uh, we are losing uh, a ton of historical knowledge as Sandra goes out. I don't think it's a mistake that I'm looking across and I haven't seen Mr. Gray in a while and I haven't seen uh, some of the, the dignitaries and previous board members that are here to um, in part to honor Jim in, in the promotion I mean the, uh, the, the service, but they're really here to honor Sandra. Um, she's that kind of person that really just gave her heart to everything she did. She did it very, very well. Um, there's no mistake that Mr. Gallagher's here tonight to really honor Sandra. And so from that, again, we love you. I love you. Thank you for everything. And God's be in your time. <laughs> So we have a few uh, uh, other presentations. So from the city of Chino, uh, Council Member Walt Pocock. I'm Supervisor's office, Kurt Hagman's office, is that big? And lastly, from the city of Chino Adults, Council Member Arvid. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Sandra, 25 years. My goodness, where does the time fly, right? Mm -hmm. I have been the city's liaison to the fire district for many of those years and have always been amazed at how absolute professional and tight-knit you run a meeting. Mm -hmm. uh, anybody that realizes that's ever been in government of any sort that has a clerk that's behind them trying to keep everything on track and that realizes that without it, things run amok. And this lady has always kept this board in check, uh, especially when you have presidents like this guy. You know. <laughs> <laughs> Very true. Very true. <laughs> but at any rate, it's my distinct privilege on behalf of the entire city uh, of Chino Hills Council to uh, honor you with this certificate of uh, commendation and wish you everything, everything that is good in your retirement. You fully deserve it. You're going to be missed. But uh, I know that this district will make sure that someone tries very hard to uh, take that, uh, fill those shoes. So God bless and thank you very much. Five minute timers on. <laughs>
All right, Madam Clerk. So the next item on the agenda is public communications. This is a time and place for the general public to address the Board of Directors about subjects not on, that do not appear on the agenda. Public may address items on the agenda at any time addressed by the Board. Due to Board policy and Brownick requirements, action may not be taken on any issue not on the agenda. When you address the Board, please state your name and address prior to making your remarks. Please limit your comments to five minutes. Is there anyone in the public that would like to speak? Hearing none, there are no public comments. The next item is the liaison reports to the fire district. Uh, let's, see. let's see. Director Steve Eli, would you like to give a report? Council Member Art Bennett from Chino Hills. Sorry, thank you, President.
City Council Member Walter Pop Popcock. Popcock. Suzette Dang from San Bernardino County Forest District.
they're very, they're very helpful. I really, and I, I know this doesn't go out over the air, but I really encourage all our veterans to take advantage of that. Art. <laughs> The next item is the consent calendar. <laughs> All right, we have uh, items number one through eight on our consent calendar. Do you have any public comments on this? No, I do not. And any board member wish to pull any item? Director Williams? No, I have none, thank you. Director Luth? No. Director Revenger? Nope. Vice President Monaco? No. And I don't either, I'll entertain a motion. Motion to approve. And I'll second the motion. Motion by Director Evinger, second by Vice President Monaco. All in favor? Aye. 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 It's 5 0 affirmative. Thank you. The next item, there is no, no uh, old business, and then the next item is new business. Item 9 is the reorganization of the Clerk of the Board's Office to include reclassification of one administrative secretary confidential position and reclassification of one office technician position. An update and amend the job classification for the clerk of the board position. The purpose is for the board of directors to review, discuss, and approve a reorganization of the office of the clerk of the board to include reclassification of one position of administrative secretary to a deputy clerk of the board confidential and reclassify one office technician position to a records technician confidential, confidential an update and amend the job classification and salary table for the position of clerk of the board. Human Resources Director Anthony Royal, can you please present your report? Sure, thank you, Sandra. Good evening, Honorable uh, Board President <laughs> Krieger and Vice President DeMonico. Maintain that tradition, I guess. Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> the item, uh, this item was presented to the HR Committee on August 29th with the unanimous recommendation that it be presented to the board this evening. <clears throat> the purpose of this report is threefold. One, to reorganize the clerk of the board department. Two, to reclassify two positions, specifically the administrative secretary to, the, to deputy clerk of the board and reclassify one office technician to records technician. And lastly, to reduce the salary of the clerk of the board due to the reassignment of duties. Given the increase in various mandates, the rise in the number of records requests and the reassignment of duties and responsibilities of the clerk of the board, this is the time to review the clerk of the board department along with the positions associated with this department. The proposed reclassification of the administrative secretary to deputy clerk of the board will reflect in the change in the current job duties as well as prepare for succession planning. The recommended salary is $6,350 to $7,718 per month. The proposed reclassification of the office technician to records technician is also recommended due to the duties and responsibilities that is now associated with this position. A records technician is appropriate position to reflect the nature of the work that this position has assumed. The recommended salary is $5,281 to $6,418 per month. Lastly, with some of the duties and responsibilities being reassigned from the clerk of the board to the assistant to the fire chief, a salary reduction is recommended for the clerk position. This will allow the clerk of the board to focus on the governance of the fire district. The salary for the clerk of the board has been modified to reflect these changes in duties and responsibilities. The proposed salary is $12,472 to $15,106 per month, which is a reduction of about 11%. The total savings is approximately $129,000 due to the new clerk of the board coming in at a lower salary, as well as keeping the additional office technician position in the clerk of the board's department vacant. This concludes my report, and I'm happy to answer any questions. All right, do we have any public speakers on this? No, I do not. And with that, I'll entertain any questions from the board. Uh, Dr. Evinger, any questions? No questions. Vice President Monaco? No questions. Director Luth? Nope. Director uh, Williams? Yes, I, uh, I have some questions. Now, uh, are these salary figures um, about equal or are they the same as like other clerk of the boards and so on, like for the city of Chino, Chino Hills? Uh, thanks for the question. Uh, the, my understanding, there was a salary survey done and the, the recommended salary was put within the range of the, there was something like 20 or 25 uh, various agencies, districts and, and municipal government agencies that were surveyed. So this, the range that we are proposing is within the uh, salary range that was, uh, the study that was done. Okay. 
Cause, uh, for, for all the positions. I'll clarify that. For all the positions as well. Yeah, because it was pretty evident that uh, our our former uh, clerk of the board was getting way too much money. She was making over like a quarter million dollars a year, and uh, you start getting that on an hourly r wage and all that kind of stuff, and uh, it was ridiculous. And uh, I think that we should try and moderate some of that stuff. I mean, I, I know you guys think she did a good job and everything. I had problems, but um, the thing also though is I don't feel that she okay. did something as well as We're stick to the topic this of this item. <laughs> as uh, the uh, fire chiefs uh, that we have and that type of thing. And the topic of the item is paying uh, the uh, it's approving the changes in the salaries right and uh, I, I feel that we're doing the right thing by getting the pay commensurate with other agencies all right I have no questions as well um, I'm sorry did I ask you yet yeah okay. yeah so I have no questions as well uh, I'll entertain a motion a motion to approve second uh, motion by Director Evinger, a second by Director Ruth. All in favor? Aye. 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 At five zero. The next item is review proposed amendment full time assistant to the fire chief job description. Purpose of purpose is for the board of directors to review, discuss, and approve a proposed amendment to the education requirements of the job description for the position of assistant to the fire chief. Human Research Director Anthony Arroyo, can you please present your report? Sure, thank you, Sandra. Once again, a good evening, Honorable Board President and Directors. This item was also presented to the HR Committee on August 29th, again with the unanimous recommendation that it be presented this evening. Upon my appointment as HR Director, I reviewed the doc job description for the Assistant to the Fire Chief in order to prepare for the pending recruitment. I discovered the approved job description required a college degree. In my experience, these positions require high level of experience rather than advanced education. As such, Human Resources is proposing the Board of Directors eliminate the need of the college degree and focus on the five years of government experience along with two years of supervisor experience. A college degree is recommended to be only desirable. We anticipate this will expand the reach when this position is open for recruitment within the next few days. This concludes my report and I'm happy once again to answer any questions. Thank you. All right, do we have any public speakers on this? No, I do not. And with that, I'll take any board member comments. Does anybody have any comments on this? No comment. Judge Williamson, comment on this one? Of course I do. Thank you. Uh, yeah, the, the thing I would like to say is uh, in regards to the uh, uh, degree or something like that, um, I do go along with that a lot because, you know, some people really know how to handle other people and talk to the other people and stuff like that. And um, that's that's a good thing to look for. And uh, I think that's what we're talking about here. So, and I think that's a very good idea to, to get somebody that's got a good personality and reaches out and so on and not necessarily going for that degree or something like that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Any other board member have any questions? Seeing none, I'll entertain a motion. I'll motion to approve. And I'll second. Uh, motion by Director Eminger, second by Vice President Monaco. All in favor? Aye. 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 It's a 5-0 vote. Thank you. The next item is the Chino Valley Fire District Section 115 Trust Annual Report. The purpose is to review and discuss the 2022 Annual Report for the Section 115 Trust. Finance Director Mark Schreker, please present the report. Thank you. The uh, Section 115 Trust bylaws require that an annual report of the trust be presented to the Board of Directors uh, 90 days after fiscal year end. Uh, so we're right about that time. We have a representative from PFM, the Trust Administrator, Ellen Clark, is here to give um, yes. an overview of the annual report. Scary news. Hmm? To give us the scary news. Yeah. Good evening, President Krieger and the Board of Directors. Uh, it's my pleasure to be here. Uh, 
Unfortunately, I don't have as good positive news to uh, share with you as uh, some of your other uh, presentations tonight. But uh, the markets have been challenging, to say the least, lately. Uh, and uh, the last six months, January 1st to uh, June 30th, uh, were the worst uh, six months, really. The last uh, April through, through June were very difficult. So that has colored the presentation. Um, let me just get uh, going here. So back to the, the purpose of this Section 115 trust. Uh, the purpose of the trust was to provide funding for your CalPERS benefits. Uh, you have a liability there that um, you continually uh, are funding with a contribution to CalPERS. But in addition, uh, the purpose of setting aside this, these monies was to earn a little bit more than you would earn in cash and have a reserve that you can draw on should your contribution to CalPERS escalate at a time when you want to maintain your budget and maintain um, what your primary purpose and mission, and that is providing um, fire service to your community. So um, we established this trust back in 2015, or you established this trust back in 2017, excuse me, uh, and we put together a performance um, objective uh, of having a total return of something in the neighborhood of 5.5% over a five-year period or longer. To achieve that, um, we have a, an allocation of 60% to growth assets, stocks, um, and 40% to fixed income assets. Uh, what you see there is you see that over the next five years, actually, based upon our capital markets assumptions, it's our, our opinion that you're not going to achieve quite that 5.5% return. It's going to be more like 4.7%. Um, but over the long term, uh, more than five years, call it 10 to 30 years, you'll exceed that by about a percent at 6.4 percent. So we're right in the midst of that not being able to get that 5.5 that percent return right now. So let's look at the markets um, as of 6.30, uh, and this is looking at returns for the three months ending 6.30, the year to date, which would be the six months, and then the trailing one, three, and five years. Uh, so what you see looking down that first column is you see negative numbers, negative numbers in every single one of the asset classes that we're showing you there or sub-asset classes. And the negative numbers are bigger for stocks and not quite as big for bonds, but we still had negative returns in the bond market. So there was no place to hide. If you look at the year-to-date number, the only positive number in that column is for commodities. We do have an allocation to commodities. Commodities represent energy, basic materials. Uh, so you can think about um, how much you're paying at the gas pump. Uh, and that uh, increased price that you've been paying is reflected in the positive return that we're seeing in that commodity index. So on a year-to-date basis um, through 630, the markets were down about 20% um, in domestic equities, a little bit less in international equities. International stocks actually just did a little bit better than domestic stocks, down um, something in the neighborhood of 18 to 19%. Uh, if you look down to fixed income, fixed income down about 10%. Let me give you some updated numbers on those um, through uh, the 13th. So that does capture uh, some of the down that we saw. Uh, but uh, the market's been very volatile. We've had some, some good days and some bad days. Yesterday, the market reacted poorly to uh, the inflation reading that we got earlier in the week. And uh, so as, as inflation will go, that will, in our opinion, dictate how severe a recession we experience going forward. So as of yesterday, uh, the Russell 3000, that uh, bottom index there, was down about 17.3%, uh, so better on a year-to-date basis than what we saw in 630, and that reflects 
a very good July and some good good days and good weeks that we've seen in the last couple of weeks. Uh, so down 17.3. The uh, international markets sitting about where they were at as of 6.30, down about 18.5. Uh, uh, the commodities figure is actually up. Now it's 22% up. Uh, it was at 18. And the, the fixed income markets, because we're continuing to see rate increases, down about 12%. So our traditional areas of investment, there's been no place to hide. It's just the magnitude of the fall. If you look out longer term, I think that the thing to look at there is that five-year number for U.S. equities is, you know, other than small cap stocks, is double-digit returns, 10% plus annualized rates of return. Our number on a go-forward basis is something in the neighborhood of 7 to 7.5%. 7 so we're expecting growth to moderate in the equity markets. Um, we actually are expecting those, those numbers to be good for the international equities markets, so 7.5% 7, 7 there. So there's possibly some more upside on the international side than in the domestic side. So I wish I had better news to share with you, but um, you know, inflation is the name of the game right now. We have a lot of inflationary pressures. Um, you're experiencing that in uh, trying to fill positions. We have about two jobs available for every person that's looking for a job. And in order to attract somebody, if you can get the applications, the only the way to attract somebody into a position is you've got to pay them more. So that's an inflationary pressure. Um, we've got supply chain disruption. So we we're sitting on the brink of potentially having uh, a rail strike, which is going to uh, exacerbate that situation even further. Uh, what I'm showing you here uh, is as of uh, the June, the index of consumer sentiment. This consumer sentiment has been at an all-time low, although I will tell you that the consumer has continued to show up. Um, what do I mean by that? Consumer spending has not deteriorated as much as you would expect looking at that index of consumer sentiment. The expectation um, for prices, and prices relate to inflation, and we've seen that steep rise. Inflation's running at about 8.3%. It topped out close to 9%. Um, we did see that tick down, um, but we saw it tick back up, and that's what the market didn't like yesterday. So inflation, if inflation comes under control, our expectation is that we will have a soft landing or not so, so severe recession. If inflation continues to be at these elevated levels, all bets are off. So here are some projections of what we, um, what we think or what the Fed thinks will happen with different measures. GDP growth, um, that's gross domestic product. The consumer it represents two-thirds to three-quarters of, of that GDP growth number. As I said, the consumer has been showing up. Some of that has been because of pent-up demand to travel over the summer. Uh, it will be interesting to see how the consumer um, behaves through the uh, holiday season here. But my opinion um, is that you have seen some pent-up demand, uh, so people have been on the road, they have been traveling much more than they were able to travel due to COVID over the last couple of summers. So you see um, the different um, shades here, the lighter bars are what the, the March projections from the Fed, the darker bars are the uh, June projections. GDP growth is moderating. It's moderating into something in the neighborhood of one and a half to two percent. And you can see that on the longer run there, something in the neighborhood of two percent. The unemployment rate is continuing to be low. It's about three and a half percent right now, with the idea that it is going to set steadily go up just a bit, something um, in the longer term, something in the more in the neighborhood of four, four plus. Uh, inflation, you see an inflation number there for 2022 at 4.3%. We're not close to that yet. We've got a ways to go. I'm not sure that we're going to achieve that by the end of the year. But let's look towards 2023. So instead of seeing a 2.7% number there, maybe we're going to see something in the, in the low threes with the idea that over the longer term, we're in the 25 to 3% range. If you look at inflation over a very long-term period of time, uh, it's about three, three and a quarter. 
the Fed funds rate, that's what the, the overnight rate that we have to pay for um, money. Um, we all know that uh, interest rates have been going up. And you see that, that um, orange bar for 2022 is, is projecting something in the neighborhood of 3.4%. 3 the current projection is a little bit higher than that. So we are expecting the Fed to continue to increase rates um, at their next meeting, probably um, 75 basis points and another 75 basis points before the end of the year. So that terminal rate could be somewhere in the neighborhood of 3.75 to 4. Over time, that is expected to moderate somewhat, but the positive news is, is that you can go out and you can buy bonds today and actually be paid to lend your money, whereas that hasn't really been the case over the last 10 years. So uh, the Treasury yield curve is something that we look at. Um, if you were to look at this yield curve today, that solid blue line is where, that, where the yield curve was as of 630. Uh, Right now, it's actually closer to that um, shaded top um, line on the band. Uh, your, your one year is at about 3.9%. Uh, the three year is at 3.75, and the five year is at about 3.6. So we've got a little bit of inversion in the yield curve right now. Inversion, an inverted yield curve, is a harbinger of recession. Uh, so uh, the 30-year, you're not getting paid um, much more than you're get getting paid on the short end. So why would you go out and purchase a 30-year bond when you can buy a five-year bond that's paying you something close to 4%? You wouldn't do it. Um, if you're lending money, that's a whole different story, but we're, we're buying um, these securities. Uh, here shows you the um, stock market. This is looking at the S&P 500. Uh, you can see the volatility that we've seen over the last um, 12, 18 months, and it has been um, somewhat in the more in the down um, down mode here in the last six six months, um, as indicated by that negative 20 percent number. We have seen that go up a little bit, but it is going up and down, and it's moving around quite a lot. Uh, the markets are tending to be quite um, volatile and emotional. Because we've seen so much going on in the markets, our investment committee has been making a lot of changes to the portfolio. And so this is showing you the changes in general terms that we've made to the portfolio over the last 12 months. Starting with the third quarter of 2021, we did decrease our allocation to stocks and to fixed income. We wanted to underweight fixed income because we expected interest rates to go up um, and give us negative returns on the fixed income market. Frankly, we weren't anticipating as severe a correction as we got in the, in the early part of this year. We weren't anticipating the um, invasion of Ukraine, um, for instance. So there are some geopolitical factors that are very difficult to identify. Um, but we have diversified the portfolio using other tools in the portfolio, including preferred securities, uh, convertible bonds. Um, we've also had a dedicated mortgage allocation, and we've increased our allocation to both REITs and commodities, REITs to hedge inflation, as well as increase the income of the portfolio. So most recently, the second quarter of 2022, you see that we decreased our allocation to U.S. and international equities. That's followed on from a decrease that we also um, uh, put on in the first quarter of 2022. So when we look at the portfolio, as of June 30, we were relatively underweight, both domestic and international equities. That since has changed, um, but let's look at the portfolio as of June 30, 2022. So unfortunately, we have a negative one-year return of negative 13.7, um, just a little bit worse than that blended benchmark performance at 13.6. So really right in line. If we look out longer term, the three-year and since inception, and since inception is almost five years, um, you've got a 5.1% return, just a little bit under that 5.5% target that we had at, at the outset of putting the trust together. And that's uh, a 50 basis points ahead of the blended benchmark there at 4.6%. The total value of the portfolio um, was 7.8 million. And you can see that I've highlighted there the underweights we had to domestic equity, international equity, and fixed income. And those underweights were, were balanced by overweights to REITs, commodities, 
preferred stocks. And then at the end of the, the, the year, your fiscal year, we had a 10% allocation to cash. That has since primarily been redeployed, redeployed into domestic equity, developed international equity, and a little bit into high quality fixed income. So your, your allocation to um, cash is probably something in the neighborhood of three to 4% today. Um, your domestic equity allocation is probably closer to about 36, 37%. International equity is probably up in the neighborhood of about uh, 17%. And we have decreased our allocation a little bit to um, commodities and put some of that back to work into that domestic and international national equity category. So um, the markets have been volatile, the markets have been shifting, and the uh, investment committee has been changing the portfolio to position the portfolio to take advantage of opportunities going forward. These are nine factors that the investment committee looks at um, and is considering as they are positioning the portfolio, especially the stocks. Red is bad, green is good. Um, it's a mixed bag. So um, the white circles are what we saw, what we thought um, three months ago. The dark circles are what we saw, saw at the beginning of July. So some positives, labor markets are positive, corporate fundamentals are, are holding up pretty well, and stocks are a lot cheaper to buy the, today than they were at the beginning of the year. The negatives, monetary policy, which means the interest rate increases that we're seeing out of the Fed, as well as um, their reduction of their balance sheet. So they're taking money out of the system. That's um, reducing the money supply, which means that money is more expensive. Um, inflation, we're having to pay more on energy and food than we've had to pay for in the past, which is decreasing our discretionary on consumption, you see consumer spending. I would put consumer spending still in neutral, but the sentiment number that I shared earlier is very negative, um, although we are seeing uh, the consumer continue to spend kind of at level, but trending down a little bit. And then the political risks of not only uh, the war in Ukraine, but some of um, the situation with China right now. So what is our current outlook? We are neutral on domestic equities, so expect that um, target to be, um, uh, the allocation to domestic equities to co be coming close to target. Um, on international equities, we are slightly negative. Valuations are better in the international markets. We're having to pay less for those stocks. The concern there is not only the geopolitical tensions, um, how Europe is going to, to weather the winter um, with their energy situation, uh, and how growth outside of the U.S. really is going to back up the growth that is possible because of those um, lower valuations is where we're having our, our question. On the fixed income side, we continue to look for rising rates, um, but we are seeing a shift from the, in the portfolio and in investors thinking more about maturity or duration of the investment um, and less about taking credit, credit risk, although we do have um, some credit risk in the portfolio right now. So that um, concludes my comments. I know that it's uh, kind of lengthy, uh, but uh, I'd entertain any questions that you may have or the audience may have at this time. Thank you. Do we have any uh, public comment on this? No, I do not. And we'll entertain board member comments. I have several questions, so I'll wait. Director Williams? The only question I have is uh, how much are we invested uh, our fire district in this fund? It's a little over $7 million, Director Williams. Thank you. Director Luth? No questions. Just appreciate the presentation. Yeah, wish it was better news, but thank you. Director Evinger? No questions. Vice President Monaco. No, thank you for the presentation and kind of what I expected. Thank so, you. so here's my questions. I need you to educate me a little bit, specifically on fixed income. So can you describe to me what fixed income is and how we have a negative return in a fixed income account? So fixed income is bonds. So um, the, a common bond that you think of in fixed income is U.S. Treasuries. Right. And there's, there's notes, bills, and bonds, or bills, notes, and bonds. Um, 
So their bond, fixed income is bonds where you're lending money to an entity or an organization, the United States government, a corporation, and you're being paid an interest rate for the, you're being paid an interest rate for the use of your money. So how does the value of a bond portfolio go down? That's my question. <laughs> so the bond portfolio that we've been holding for the last 10 years hasn't been giving, they haven't been paying us much for lending our money. We've only been paid, call it one and a half to 2%. Whereas we can go out into the marketplace today and buy a bond and get a, a, a one year bond and get paid 4%. So the value of the bonds that we're holding now is worth less because I can take new money and get 4%, but my existing bond portfolio is only giving me 2%. So when interest rates go up, the principal value of an existing bond goes down because we're not, our, our, it's not as attractive because I can go out and I can get 4% instead of 2%. But am I losing money? If I put a million dollars into a bond that is paying me 1.5% interest and a year later that same bond could be selling at 4% at interest, my principal, inter my principal doesn't deplete, just the in potential earnings potential goes down. So is that correct? That's, that's correct. So what we're, what we're presenting to you, President Krieger, here is a total return based on the market value of the investments that you're holding in this portfolio. The only time, so, so that negative 14% return over the last year, if I went and sold all of those, that $7.8 million, and I sold that $7.8 million, I would realize that negative return. But I ha I'm not selling those. I'm holding those securities. Yes, if I went to go into the market right today and wanted to sell them, I'd sell them at a loss. But I'm not doing that. And are we doing it a little bit on the margin? Yes. We would be, um, maybe we would be selling some bonds at a loss and reinvesting that money into a bond where we could um, get a better rate of return. But over the long term, the reason that we would do that, or the reason that a manager would do that, is to get a higher rate of return over the long term. So um, we're reporting to you total return, not realized loss. Okay. Okay? So um, if we were to sell, if you were to take $2 million out of this portfolio today, you would be realizing some loss. I will tell you that you've earned more than $2 million of appreciation since you've invested the money into this portfolio. And that's reflected in that 5.1% annualized return over the almost the last five years. Okay. Uh, I think that I'm just looking historically, you know, I think at one point we were over $8 million. Last year we invested $850,000 additional money. Um, and now we're, 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 yeah, I would not expect. Not only is that eight and eight hundred fifty thousand dollars not realized, there's there's a negative number, uh, even based off that. So I guess I'm I'm looking at it is are we better taking that money out and just putting it into a savings account that bears zero dollar interest, and and we wouldn't be going negative. I would I would tell you that that. Um, even your cash account today is in negative territory. And uh, this portfolio with a 5% return over the last five years is well ahead of your, your more conservative portfolio. So let's, we, can, we can look at that. Sorry, I don't mean to go down the rabbit hole. That's okay. So, so looking at here, looking at the fixed income, I don't have a short-term fixed income number here for you, but I've got the Bloomberg Barclays U.S. aggregate. That's the most conservative index, fixed income index. And what you see is over a five-year period, you've got a 1%, a 0.9% return. Yeah, it sucks. Um, yeah. I'm, that's not a technical term, but, um, but um, what, what we had, the situation that we've had over the last 10 years is we've had very, very low interest rates. I, I will tell you that I can remember when you could get a passbook savings account that earned you 5%. Right. 
When I started in this business, I started in a very high inflationary time in the 1980s. How much do you think you could get on a money market fund back then? Well, a lot, right? 20 plus percent, yeah. right. But we had rampant inflation, right? So, so still today, with that 4% um, return, that 3.9% return on a, on a one-year bond, what did I just tell you that inflation was running at? 8.3%. We're still not earning, we're still not earning a real rate of return on cash. And to get to a nor normal situation, we should be able to, and it's a should, we should be able to earn a real rate of return on cash. Not a lot. And that's what the expectation is over the long term. But we are in this reset period, and that's, it's very painful. It's happening very quickly. I will take a risk and say that I think that I will be ta ta talking to you in a year, and things will be more positive than they are right now. Uh, so you yeah. can hold me yeah, to that. We hope so. <laughs> you can hold me to that. Um, but it is all dependent upon inflation, and uh, certainly um, we've got some exogenous factors that are um, making our path even a little bit more bumpy than expected. All right. Thank you. Uh, I've got a question. Go ahead, John. Uh, do we have any restrictions on what we can invest in when it comes to the stock market or commodities or international investments? Are there restrictions because we're a governmental agency that we cannot invest in certain uh, Certain types of investments. The, the, the restrictions that you have are actually governed by the investment policy that uh, the portfolio is uh, invested under. But um, this portfolio, because it's in a, in a, in a trust, uh, it is outside the uh, short-term government code restrictions that you have on your short-term fixed income. So it's the restrictions of a prudent investor. Uh, and you've got a 60-40 uh, asset allocation. And within that, um, Vice President DeMonico, we've got ranges um, as to what we can invest in. This portfolio is only investing in publicly traded securities. Um, so even on the commodities side or on the real estate side, uh, these are publicly traded securities that can be bought today and sold tomorrow. Okay, but we don't have any legislative restrictions like CalPERS does for how they can invest in... Uh well, this portfolio is similar to CalPERS, but it is restricted by the prudent investor rule and by, and, and by the investment policy that the district has adopted. Excellent. Thank you. Any other questions? And with that, I believe we just filed this. Is that correct? Thank you, Ellen, very much for being here. You're very welcome. Really appreciate Thank it. Thanks I wish I had had better news Thank, for you. Thank you for the education. <laughs> The next item is a resolution number 2022-15 uh, of the Board of Directors of the Chino Valley Independent Fire District, approving an employment agreement between the Chino Valley Fire District and Sandra Escudero for interim clerk of the board. Purpose is to review and approve resolution number 2022-15, approving an employment agreement between the Chino Valley Fire District and Sandra Escudero for interim, interim clerk of the board. Legal counsel, Isaac... Rosen, can you please present your report? Uh, good evening, board members. Uh, before you tonight is a recommendation to approve, uh, as Sandra mentioned, Resolution 2022-15 uh, and a uh, corresponding retired annuant employment agreement between the district and Sandra Escudero to serve as interim district clerk of the board. So as a result of Sandra Heaney's retirement, which was effective today, uh, the permanent position for the district clerk uh, is vacant. Uh, the district has begun its recruitment process for a full-time position, but in the meantime, uh, the employment agreement, if approved, would elevate uh, Sandra Escudero to our interim district clerk on a temporary basis. So uh, many of you have seen Sandra, obviously. She has been uh, working for us, and that was under a previously approved board agreement where she was providing extra help to the district clerk uh, uh, department. And now with uh, Sandra Heaney's uh, retirement, it's necessary to adopt a separate uh, agreement uh, for a retired annuant. Uh, and that comes from uh, CalPERS. So CalPERS requires us to approve uh, the terms within the corresponding resolution that goes with this agreement. 
Um, and then we will send that up to CalPERS if it's approved by the board. Uh, and the position uh, would be interim and, and temporary, uh, and the district expects to fill it, I believe, within six to eight, uh, six to eight weeks. Um, so this is a temporary measure uh, to have someone uh, step in more formally to uh, Sandra Heaney's uh, position, and I'm available for questions. Thank you. Do we have any public speakers on this? No, we do not. Excellent. Uh, board member comments. Does anybody have any comments on this? My understanding, this is just one of those legal mumbo-jumbo requirements that we have to go through, correct? <laughs> As your attorney, I would say <laughs> leave it to the board, but uh, there, are, there are certainly requirements uh, that are placed on us as an agency to go through the motions with respect to uh, getting someone in that, that position on an interim basis. Good enough. How is that, President Krieger? I like okay. that. That, that, was, that was pretty good. Anybody? Wayne? Well, Harvey? Uh, now, when you say you send that up to CalPERS, they have to approve it? They don't approve it uh, per se, but they require record of it um, just for purposes of tracking uh, CalPERS obligations for the position. Like for an interim, is their retirement paid? No, it's uh, just uh, just salary is contemplated by the agreement, but they still need to track it in line with uh, with uh, the annuance former work uh, for other agencies. Okay, uh, still not quite understanding how Calpers enters into it, but I'll go along with it. I, I can shed, shed some light on that, uh, Director. CalPERS, as a result of some changes that they made a few years ago, requires that any government agency that contracts with CalPERS, when they hire a retired annuitant, the limited number of hours is 960 hours per fiscal year, and we have to keep track of those hours on a, on a uh, per pay period basis and notify CalPERS of those hours. CalPERS then keeps track of those hours, make sure that in this case, Sandra doesn't go over the 960 hours. If they, if she does, which I don't anticipate, we are penalized. She could be penalized as well too. So it's just a matter of record keeping on PERS part. As President Krieger said, it's a lot of mumbo jumbo that we have to deal with, but it's it's required of us. And just is just a formality that we have to do to get Mrs. Escudero on board here. Yeah, I don't want to belabor this, but I take it that's because there have been times when people were not getting retirement, maybe when they perhaps should have been in the retirement system as far as CalPERS was concerned or something? Yeah, CalPERS prior to this was it was very lucrative for retirees to come back into employment of a public agency and enhance the retirement in, in ways that just is not, wasn't acceptable. And that, that PERS modified it a number of years ago to eliminate those uh, th these, these expenses that they were incurring. Okay, great. Thank you. Director Luth? Director Evanger. No. Vice President Tabon. No I have no questions. Swell and entertain a motion. Okay. No second. So a motion by Director Luth and a second by Director Evanger. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. The next item is fire code local amendments and ordinance adoption. 2022 California Fire Code and 2021 International Fire Code. The purpose is for the Board of Directors to review, introduce, and conduct a first reading by title only and propose ordinance <coughs> adopting the 2022 Fire Code based on the 2021 International Fire Code with local amendments. Deputy Fire Chief Brian Dotko, can you please present your report? Check, check. <laughs> check, check. One, two. All right, we're good. All right. <laughs> Good evening, President Krieger and members of the board. Uh, give a quick discussion here on this. Uh, Building Standards Commission adopts the majority of the 2021 International Fire Code and makes state amendments giving, giving us the 2022 California Fire Code. Typically, this is done every three years. Local jurisdictions can adopt this year's California Fire Code as adopted by the Building Standards Commission without any further changes, or they can adopt new local amendments or readopt existing local amendments. The district's local adoption process includes updated local regulations to the 2022 California Fire Code while ensuring continuous fire code regulations remain in place, including some previously adopted local amendments. 
Attached to this report is a red line copy of Ordinance 2022-03, outlining all proposed updates and or changes since the time the board adopted local amendments in response to the 2022 fire code, thus creating Ordinance 2022-03. Some of the changes that are in the, uh, the current changes, uh, Chapter 1, language that provides clarification on administrative requirements and enforcement as a fire district. Chapter 3, language deletion due to the adoption of our Vegetation Man Management Ordinance 2022-01. Chapter 9, uh, language that provides point of reference for staff and businesses to easily identify maintenance and inspection frequencies for fire and life safety systems. And Chapter 49, there's some language deletion due to an extensive rewrite of this chapter. Proposed amendments clarify specific requirements for the fire district and are not new to what was previously adopted uh, and enforced by the fire district. Uh, amendments to the 2022 fire code are being proposed to maintain the overall current level of safety and to clarify existing requirements within the fire district. The majority of the amendments will allow the fire district to properly address fire hazards within the fire district. Uh, the building officials of City of Chino, Chino Hills, and County San Bernardino have been provided proposed amendments to allow sufficient time for review and comment prior to the public hearing on this ordinance. And this ordinance required, um, this ordinance is required by state regulations also to be ratified by the cities and counties that we serve. The new fire code ordinance will be presented to the City Council, City of Chino, and City Council of Chino Hills, and Board of Supervisors, County of San Bernardino, after the fire district adopts the ordinance. Uh, the recommendation, it is recommended that the Board of Directors review, introduce, and conduct a first reading of Ordinance 2022-03, adopting the 2022 California Fire Code based on the 2021 International Fire Code with local amendments, approve waiving the reading of the entire ordinance and read the ordinance by title only, advise the public that a complete copy of ordinance is available for public inspection at Fire District Headquarters, and set public hearing for October 12, 2022 during the second reading of Ordinance 2022-03 and direct staff to provide public notice as required by law. That was a lot. No, I do not. And board member comments. Rick Williams. Uh, I have a comment. Uh, I think when you read that the type of thing, that like every minute or two you should have a cowbell and do that, <laughs> wake us up. <laughs> Absolutely. Agreed. Other than that, thank you very much. You're welcome. I'm sure glad you didn't read through that. We'd still be here. Wow. <laughs> I tried to make it as fast as possible. <laughs> you did great. Thank you. No, no questions. redline out all the stuff and add all the stuff in? I did not, Danielle Barnes, fire marshal. There was a lot. I did it. There was a lot. I did it our last code adoption, but I was, I she was, did more this I year. I was going through and I was just like, wow, page after page after yeah. page of redline and changing and it just was a lot of work. Yeah, so. it's good though to clean, clean it up quite a bit, so it'll be nice. Absolutely. Deputy Fire Marshal Daco, that'd be Fire Marshal O'Toole. Oh, I'm sorry. You're yes, <laughs> I know. I, I do the oh, same thing. I still I make that same mistake. <laughs> Thank you, Chief Williams. <laughs> With that, I'll entertain a motion. I do. Make a motion that we. Oh, I'm sorry. I do not have any speaker. Speak any no. public speaker? No. I thought He's, I already asked that. She's no. stopping us. No, no public speakers. Go ahead, Dr. Dr. Williams. You okay, said that uh, you have a motion to was, approve. Yeah, I do. Uh, was this supposed to just be a uh, uh, to uh, inform us? No. Or are we making a motion to We're making a motion to change the policy. Okay. I, I vote that we change the policy, and I would like to make a motion that we do that. Excellent. Can I have a second? The clarification is to a public hearing. Yeah. I, public I was just going to note, yeah, the, the recommendation is to introduce into the record uh, the ordinance title, uh, waive future readings, and set the public hearing, which would be the second reading of the ordinance for the October 12th uh, board meeting. So, Director Williams, is that your uh, motion? My motion is that we go ahead and introduce this for public comment and final reading. Is that what I'm supposed to? Yeah. Okay, got Good. it. Excellent. And second? I'll second. Uh, so, uh, motion by Director Williams, second by Director Evanger. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Aye.
Okay, I will read title. Ordinance number 2022-03 is an ordinance of the Chino Valley Fire Independent Fire District adopting re by reference and amending the 2022 edition of the California Fire Code with ETRA and the 2021 International Fire Code regulating and governing the safeguarding of life and property from fire and explosion hazards, hazardous materials and from conditions hazardous to the life or property in the occupancy of building and premises and providing for the issuance of permits and collection of fees and repealing fire code ordinance number 2019-01 of the Chino Valley Independent Fire District. Fantastic, thank you. Rod, to Chief Comments, Chief Williams. Thank you, uh, President Krieger and board under personnel development activities, Chino Valley Fire District ambulances responded to 201 incidents, which is 44.3 of, of our calls ambulances responded resulted in 89 transports. Our response time average for ambulances is eight minutes and four seconds. Our 90th percentile response time for ambulance is 12 minutes and 47 seconds. 90% of all of our responses are under 12 minutes and 47 seconds. Uh, we currently meet the 959 standard, 78.11% of our, of our responses. <clears throat> Under port activities and public relations, the Chino Valley Fire District Board of Directors attended the League of California Cities Inland Empire Division meeting on August 18th at the Boys Republic Bistro in Chino Hills. The Chino Valley Fire District Board of Directors staff and I attended the CSD annual conference on August 22nd through the 25th in Palm Desert. The fire district hosted a gathering of the Chino Valley community at Station 66 to honor those who lost their lives in the tragic events of September 11th. The event was well attended by board members, local, local dignitaries, staff, and community members. Under organizational items of interest, the Chino Valley Fire District will host a sharps collection on September 24th at the training center between 8 o'clock and 1. And uh, for a recruitment update, I will have our new HR director provide that for us. Thank you, Chief. Uh, the lead fire equipment mechanic interviews for that position were uh, took place this past Monday, September 12th. Five applicants were, uh, were qualified to undergo the interview process. An eligibility list was created and a top candidate was identified. Fire inspector, our new fire inspector has passed backgrounds and will start on Monday, October 3rd. And as board legal counsel mentioned earlier, the board of the clerk position opened earlier today. That concludes my report. Thank you. Thank you, Anthony. Uh, continuing on under upcoming events, our open house event will be hosted on October 15th from 9 to 12 at our training center on Schaefer. The ASBCSD monthly meeting is scheduled for September 19th at 6 p.m. in Hesperia. A finance committee meeting is scheduled for September 26th at 8 a.m. And last but not least, uh, the 2022 San Bernardino County State of the or State of the County event is scheduled for October 5th at 3 p.m. at the Ontario Convention Center, and that concludes my reports. You say October 5th? Mm -hmm. Correct. That's October 5th at 3 p.m. All right. Time for board member comments. We'll start with Director Williams. Thank you very much. Uh, yes, I uh, attended uh, some of the things that the chief talked about, the uh, CSDA in Palm Desert, and uh, got a lot of good information there. Uh, had a good time meeting other people, talking, and seeing the exhibits uh, that the uh, exhibitors had put out. <clears throat> and um, uh, also, uh, I did attend the... Uh, meeting up in, uh, well, actually, I think it was in uh, um, Montana, and uh, they had a good meeting there. I can't remember exactly what they talked about. And uh, so, uh, anyway, uh, been a lot of good information going down, and uh, I did go to the uh, 911 thing, and uh, it was very good, very good showing. We have a great uh, uh, the uh, guys that do the drums and the bugles and stuff, or not the bugles, but the uh, on your guard. 
Yeah, thank you. Uh, they're they're excellent, and uh, we're very lucky to have them. And uh, thank you very much. I think that's about all I have. Thank you very much, Director Lou. Thank you. So I had a channel council meeting in there, uh, the CSDA conference. Uh, we had our own special meeting last month, the airport commission. And uh, interesting, so the last Chino Council meeting, they had a special meeting before the closed session meeting, before the regular meeting, <laughs> where they talked about a couple of things. Well, one of the things on the agenda was uh, uh, um, a substation, which down in the preserve area, which I know we're facilitating part of that now. So anyway, the council's direction at this point is to look at building their own facility down there eventually. So at some point, um, We'll, we'll see where that ends up going, but that, that is the direction they're headed at this point. Uh, congratulations, Melania, 15 years. Thank you, thank you, thank you, everybody. Um, th just appreciate all you guys do to keep us informed and on the straight and narrow, much appreciated. And congratulations, Captain uh, Sanchez, on 20 years. And to our retirees, Jim. Jim and, and his wife, I've known them for years. I'm, most everybody, if you're in this community, you, you knew them. They were involved, they were everywhere, uh, very active and very much a part of this community. Definitely gonna be missed. And Sandra, uh, 25 years, appreciate, again, part of the clerk's office. Just appreciate everything she did for this district, did for me as a, as a board member, and wish her well in her retirement. Uh, the Tower 9 presentation, that's a while that is gonna take a, a little effort to get that mounted up. That is just <laughs> awesome, just fantastic. Cool. Yeah, and uh, the 9-11 uh, remembrance, I am so glad that the district continues to do that. I couldn't stay for the whole thing. I had another commitment, but um, just appreciate everybody that's involved in that, that we continue to do that. I think it's important and it's very much appreciated. So that's the end of my com uh, comments. Thank you, Director Luth. Director Evinger. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I'm going to start out with the retirements. Um, with Jim has been amazing. I had the pleasure of working with Jim for Fire Safe Council, and, and it just everyone knows there's just some some so much positive to say about Jim. Um, in regards to Sandra, having been in management about <clears throat> the same amount of time she worked here for the district, I know the value of an amazing employee who stands by you, who protects your business, who just does about everything. And I can say with 1,000 plus percent, she worked and was an amazing employee for this district and invaluable. When I started not knowing much about special districts and she worked and made sure that I stayed in line and I know that I can say that, um, you know, all of you guys here understand, those who understand the position and understand can, can say that. Um, her integrity, just everything, she was amazing and, and I just am very, very grateful to have had the opportunity to work with her. So that's what I'm gonna say about Sandra. Um, Melania, it's still a pleasure, sweetie. I love working with you, thank you. Thank you for your 15 years of service. And Brian, we miss Brian today, but he is, he is a gem as well and I appreciate him as well. Um, I, let me see here, I had um, several meetings, our special meeting, um, had the opportunity to go to the League of California Cities and I appreciate that Mayor Marquez um, invited us and I really enjoyed that and the presentation that evening. Um, let me see, two Fire Safe Council meetings, the HR committee meeting, um, which the information was on the agenda tonight, uh, Chino Hills Council meeting and um, the 9-11 event. I just want to say, like everyone else, um, it was amazing, and I just thank us for continuing that um, tradition of honoring and respecting those who perished on that tragic day. So with that, I'll pass on. Thank you. Appreciate that. Thank you. Uh, Vice President Monica. Yeah, a couple of things. Uh, did attend a Chino Council meeting and the IEUA meetings um, online. I, I don't know, Steve, are you gonna, guys going to have those in person soon? or come in person tomorrow. I can? Yeah. Because I think most of the people, even on board, were online, weren't they? Or, right. Yeah. You can, come, you can come in person anytime. So you're, okay, you are accepting in we person? Are, okay. Yes. okay, perfect. Thank you. And uh, we did have a finance committee meeting. Those items were on the agenda, and the agenda review we did. CSDA conference, I attended that. That's always a, a great event because it pays uh, 
uh, special attention to the special districts, of which we are one, in a number of, of really good educational type things. And uh, I brought the booklet in case anybody's interested to see the classes we took and, and courses we took. But we uh, we were down there and we attended quite a few of them and uh, got some good legislative updates and those types of things. Um, we did attend to Cal City's, uh, uh, I, I'm going to call it a chapter meeting because that's what we call our special districts meeting or mm -hmm. chapter meetings. And uh, I want to thank Mayor Marquez for inviting us to that, but uh, did get to meet Kelly Serrato, I think his name is, mm -hmm. who's going to be our new Hopefully state our senator. senator. Well, he's running unopposed. Yeah, we're actually going to have two state senators. Right, for a while. We'll still have Josh Newman for two years, and, right. and we're going to have Cal, uh, we should have Kelly, because he, I looked it up, he's running unopposed, so he should get elected, <coughs> but uh, got the opportunity to meet him, and uh yeah, he was a firefighter in Inglewood when I was a firefighter in Hawthorne. We were there at the same time for about 12 years together. So our paths crossed and we never knew it. So, uh, But it was nice to meet him, and I think we're going to be really pleased with him. Um, the 911 Memorial, phenomenal uh, presentation. It's heart-wrenching, uh, you know, especially when we think back on that tragedy that occurred in 2001. But, uh, but I'm really honored that this district puts forth the effort to pay tribute to the 9-11 incident. And our pipes and drums are phenomenal. They get better every year. And so happy that we could provide the support to have pipes and drums. Not many departments our size have pipes and drums, but not only do we have them, we've got a good one, and we've got quite a few members involved in them, as well as the Honor Guard. So uh, I want to thank the guys for that. Uh, Melania, thank you so much for your 15 years of service. That, uh, it's about the same length of time I've been here. It's hard to believe that that much time has passed so fast. But thank you and really appreciate you keeping us in order. We observed that tonight with President Krieger. Fantastic. Thank you. Uh, from my standpoint, I attended most of the events that everybody else did. It was a very uh, busy month uh, between the League of Cities, the Chino Hills um, Council meetings, school district meetings, finance committees, being out at the desert at CSDA with my colleagues and the chief. Um, and Tower 9 plaque, that's, that, that's beautiful. And uh, yeah, we're running out of space there, but it's it's it, it's awesome. I'm, I'm glad that's a great tradition that uh, that we have here, um, and it just gets better and better. Um, Jim Powderly, you know, it's hard to say Jim without saying Casey's name because they were such an integral part of the city of Chino uh, and just great community members. Uh, we're going to miss them, but wish them well up in Big Bear. Um, and, and, you know, I don't know if I could say anything better than what uh, – 
uh, Sarah did about Sandra, but she's she's just been a guiding post for us here uh, to keep us in line and to um, just a wonderful, wonderful person to keep us in line. So um, and to to help train us as board members, I think it invaluable. Um, and Melania, thank you for your 15 years of service, and you know you're picking up that. Uh, torch and trying to keep us in line right now and we appreciate that even to the point where you have to point out the plaque for me to hand to you um, and uh, congratulations to Captain Sanchez for 20 years it's uh, fantastic with that we will adjourn the meeting to uh, a regular meeting of the Board of Directors of the Chino Valley Fire District Fire District to be held here on Wednesday October 12th 2022 at 6 o'clock p.m. Have a wonderful evening, everybody.